Flo Brooks. We're here in my studio in Red Roof and today we're going to be making a clay tableau. Um, a hand-sized tile made of air drying clay and I'm going to share with you some different layering techniques, ways of thinking about depth and introducing pattern and texture into your design. Uh, tableau basically translates as a figurative scene, but you don't necessarily have to approach it in a figurative way at all. You can do something more abstract. So for this, you'll need some air drying clay. We're going to use about a quarter of a pack, but that will be more than enough for what we're doing. Um, a rolling pin, but again, you could use your hands if that's uh, easier. A cup of water, that's our glue, our kind of slip as we're working with the clay. We've got different sculpting tools, um, dibbers, scoopers, pencils. And then I've got different kind of um, household implements that we might use for mark making. Kind of a scourer, just a plastic fork. And then I've got some kind of organic materials um, which again we could draw from, we could use to um, indent the clay, we could draw around. A piece of paper and a pencil to draw your design and then any kind of reference materials that you might want to refer to. Um, so they could be uh, images, photographs, other drawings, whatever, whatever you want really. So the way I usually start is by making a drawing and um, I work to scale so it's easier to translate into the clay. And for my tableau, um, I was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend about Halantau, which is a uh, Cornish festival that happens in Helston and uh, the whole of the town gets kind of bedecked in all this greenery and uh, kind of spring flowers and it's a really incredible spectacle. Um, so for my composition I've got this figure in a doorway in a fresh hold surrounded by this huge kind of sheaf of greenery. And as you're making your drawing have a little think about um, how you might want to approach depth. Um, I'm going to think about it in quite a traditional way so I want the area behind my figure to be the furthest away, to be my background. Um, the figure, I think, will be somewhere in the mid-ground, and then I want this huge um, spring greenery to be kind of protruding out the most. So I'm just going to put that to the side, and we can kind of refer back to it. So if you grab your clay now, and roll it in a ball, and then we're kind of going to roll it out into a slab the same size as our drawing. It's about just under a centimetre thick. So it be, will be something like that. As you can see, I've already started to uh, draw out my composition. I'm just going to use a, one of these sculpting tools that's a bit like a knife. And that's quite nice for um, cutting out the outline. So when you're happy with your with your outline you can uh, begin to cut out the excess clay. The thing about air drying clay is when it's um, out of the packet of course it's just beginning to dry so you just have to be a little bit wary of this. It gives you quite a, a biggish window of time, but um, I find as you're working in it, it's best to smooth out uh, all the kind of rough edges and kind of get the finish that you want, as opposed to doing it all at, at the end. So I've sort of, you can take your time really more doing it. Again, I'm just using, um, the water and I'm just smoothing out the edges 
like so. And you can use tools, you can use your hands. I quite like just using my finger for this bit. And when you've worked all the way around, you can, um, we can think about some of the layering techniques. One that I like to use is called bar relief, which um, translates as like low relief. And basically you're just kind of creating um, superficial depth by carving out some of the clay to um, bring other layers out more. So I know that I want this area behind my figure to be the kind of my background the furthest away. So that's the kind of area I'm going to sculpt out. And I've just again using the same kind of tool, I'm just um, drawing out this, this kind of negative space. I'm just going down a few millimetres, not too deep, and it's best being kind of cautious because it's difficult if you make a hole. Um, and then I'm just pulling the clay out. And that is kind of literally what you do. Like so. And you can use water, start smoothing it out. You can cut out areas so they're kind of flat, or you could uh, cut them out at an angle, like a gradient. That looks quite nice. And you could kind of vary the, uh, the depth as well. So, a little bit like that. It gives you beginning to see, you know, it's bringing these areas out quite well. And this is a dried out piece that, um, again, you can see sort of gone around the legs and it's just kind of subtly around the arm. But it's quite a nice kind of nuanced effect. And another layering technique I like to use is um, building up. So I've just begun to draw on some shapes. Uh, this is part of my greenery and I've just done this by eye. You could trace your drawing if that's easier. And I'm just going to cut them out. And I can begin to kind of build up the, the layers in this way. Oh, this is going to be my kind of vape smoke, I reckon a bit like that. And you can kind of cut out bits, sort of recut them out, move them around, play with the composition a bit more. And then you're also thinking about how to introduce kind of marks and, and pattern into it. So again, you could roll out um, clay, make it finer than the original, um, the main tile, because you don't want to make it too chunky and you can press into it. This lichen has like a really beautiful kind of organic texture. This is sort of like, I don't know, it kind of looks pockmarked or something. But you can think about, you know, using different materials um, to, you know, add sort of some kind of energy to your your design that's sort of supposed to maybe be shadow or something. Maybe kind of stylized sort of dress folds. And yeah, and then you can kind of um, roll little balls up. You can make kind of oblong shapes and kind of twirl them around. And when you want to stick any of the clay down, you just need to remember that um, it needs to be kind of properly stuck together. So if you score the underside, like so, and then you just add water, and then you can 
work out the placement. And then I just use this kind of slightly curved tool to merge the pieces together. And you need to kind of work around the whole of the edges so that they're really kind of stuck down. Because else um, they might uh, come off, they might kind of crack or fall off, which isn't good. So I've just done a little bit there to show you. Just down there, but you can work around all of the sides. And yeah, these are just some different kind of marks that you might want to introduce. These are just different kind of sausage and kind of ball shapes that I've kind of contoured. Um, again, this is the lichen, different tools. And then when you're happy with your tile, if you just turn it on its underside, you want to lightly score the back and this stops it from bowing, like so, and put it somewhere dry and warm to completely dry out. And then you might want to um, paint it to add colour. So in this one, I've, I usually start by painting the whole tile in white acrylic paints, and then I can add acrylic, coloured acrylic on top of that. That provides a nice base, but I've sort of done a gradient from light green to dark green, and I've kind of got some, I've used paint in the indentations and kind of a mottled brush. Then I've got some other examples with some other kind of tiles that I made. So it's sort of quite kind of washy paint washes of paint in this one and I've got um, holes in case you wanted to hang it, give it as a gift or something. Um, again, just sort of really kind of abstracted blobby shapes but they kind of add quite a kind of fun energy. And this is just a swift a telegraph pole. But yeah, that's how you can make a clay tableau and I hope you've enjoyed the workshop. Thank you.